I need to let everyone know that this girl edits her videos. It's just like this girl who recently got called out for editing all of her videos to look like this when she actually looks like this and doesn't disclose that her newer videos are edited. Hello everybody, it is me, Salem. Welcome back to my Chanel. How are you guys doing? I am very sick. <laughs> After taking the utmost precautions, quarantining, making sure I don't hang out with anyone, doing the absolute most to make sure I don't contract anything. That backfire on me because I recently came out positive for Bovid. I can't say the real thing or else I'll get demonetized. So yes, I currently have that in my body right now and it's horrible and I hate it and I want to die. I feel so tired. I literally projectile vomited like Emily Rose the other day because I was just so nauseous or who knows, maybe I'm pregnant. You know what? I take that back. I don't even want to speak that into existence right now. But yeah, I have been incredibly sick and it <coughs> has sucked. So if I'm coughing a lot, <coughs> or sound a little off <coughs> in this video. Just know that I am very sick right now and just bear with me. But even though I'm sick, the grind never stops. My brain is on like 1% right now. It's not even funny. While I was sick and bedridden with nothing to do, I did what any good American citizen would do while sick cooped up in their bedroom. I decided to just watch Corey Kenshin videos all day, watch some Real Housewives of Atlanta, and also scroll on TikTok for about seven hours straight. And man, did my life change forever. Usually my For You page is videos of people cooking, of cute dogs, or people DIYing things from Ikea, or just funny things, you know? But I think anyone can relate when I say when you are on TikTok for a really long time, your For You page starts acting a little sus. All of a sudden you start running into really weird lives. The one live that I always get is this one person who always plays with BTS dolls and they're like hanging from the ceilings doing triple axles and stuff. Where you get content that you have never seen before on your For You page, just all of a sudden being thrown at you left and right. And obviously this is a part of the way TikTok works. It's a constant stream stream of content, right? That's how the algorithm works. And although the algorithm also works in a way where the more TikToks you purposely look for or watch for longer than like 10 seconds, the more those types of TikToks will be recommended to you. But sometimes there are things that just pop up against your will. And that is literally how I would describe my experience being sick, just scrolling on TikTok nonstop. The amount of things that I've seen. I am gonna sue. I'm gonna sue. I genuinely believe that TikTok has just become Tumblr 2.0. Honestly, it really has. And when I say Tumblr 2.0, I don't mean in the sense of it's so good, the community is amazing, there's so much funny stuff on there. No, I mean the peak of toxic Tumblr era times two. For those of you who don't know what Tumblr is, how does it feel to live a life without mental illness? How does it feel to be God's favorite? I would definitely love to know. If you are a poor unfortunate soul like me who did grow up with Tumblr, simply mentioning the name Tumblr, you probably had war flashbacks to the Hatalia fandom, to the Yuri on Ice fandom, to the Homestuck fandom, shipping wars, everyday users constantly misdiagnosing themselves for whatever new mental illness popped up on their page that day. And of course, trigger warning, counting calories, and the whole thigh gap thing, which unfortunately will forever be engraved in my frontal lobe. It was very traumatizing, y'all. Oh, what the hell just happened? Okay, um, clearly that was the Tumblr god coming for my neck. Told you talking about Tumblr is cursed. So why am I exactly comparing Tumblr to TikTok? 
Tumblr and TikTok definitely have a lot of things in common. Tumblr encouraged a lot of people to dabble in many types of aesthetics when it came to makeup and clothing. Tumblr became a very popular platform to meet with people who also shared the same interests as you, whether it came to standing people like Lana Del Rey and Marina and the Diamonds, or to talk about the latest episodes of Supernatural or whatever TV show that you liked. TikTok shares this similarity where a lot of people are also dabbling in their aesthetics, whether it comes to makeup and outfits, of course, standing their favorite artists. Uh, oh man sorry your for you page can be filled with other content creators who like the same things that you like such as people who make attack on titan content or demon slayer content or to talk about the new episode of euphoria i don't even watch euphoria but because tiktok is literally so engulfed in euphoria there's always clips that show up on my for you page about euphoria and all i know is that cassie's very stupid for trying that with rue and although all these things seem pretty harmless and it just seems like young people trying to interact with other young people based on things that they like, I really do believe that TikTok and Tumblr share one very big thing that I know people have critiqued like TikTok for like in the past and to this day, but it doesn't get as much attention when people talk about it because I feel like a lot of people don't want to admit that TikTok shares this resemblance with Tumblr, but the one thing that they definitely have in common is the amount of toxicity that they share. Anyone who's been watching me for a long time knows that even though I think TikTok is a great place to connect with other people and to just have a good laugh and just to forget whatever's going on in your life, right? I think it could be very good for body positivity. It could be very good for people trying to make their art more noticeable or their music more noticeable. There are are parts of that platform that can be very dangerous and I'm definitely no stranger to critiquing that. When it comes to Tumblr and TikTok sharing that toxicity, both strive off of mental illness, calorie counting, diet culture, body shaming, and people photoshopping their bodies. Except I feel like with TikTok it's even more dangerous because technology has advanced so much to the point where you could be scrolling on TikTok and you see someone's body type and you automatically assume that it's real and you compare your body type to that person's body type not knowing that it is photoshopped through video which is a thing how do i know well because i ran into all of that during my time being bedridden and i just really feel like it needs to be talked about so even though i am a little sick i still feel like this needs to be talked about so today's video is going to be talking about how tiktok really is tumblr 2.0 but guys before i jump into today's video you guys know the drill i gotta pay my bills so here's a word from our sponsor have you ever wanted to help out the planet all while becoming a certified lord or lady well now you can with established titles. Established titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lords and ladies. Established titles allows people to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land and in return, established titles will plant one tree with every single order and protect the beautiful pristine woodlands of Scotland. And with each pack, you will be gifted a certificate that showcases your title and features a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your land. And with this, you could officially change your name to Lord or Lady and even get it on your credit card, plane tickets, or your dating profiles. This honestly makes for a really good last minute Valentine's gift. It's fun and personalized. Make your loved ones a lord or lady of scotland with established titles they're even running a valentine's day sale and offering you guys my viewers a special offer use code salem to get an additional 10 percent off any purchase go to establishedtitles.com salem to become a lady or lord today quick trigger warning for the next 10 minutes i will be going in deep about pro ed culture on tumblr and how it has slowly made its way onto tiktok if you find this type of stuff sensitive to talk about you can go ahead and skip to this timestamp or click off the video tiktok and tumblr have always been 
two platforms that have been compared to on social media. In 2010, Tumblr definitely filled that void that a lot of young adults and teens were feeling. An online place where teenagers can just come together and, you know, hang out. What Tumblr was for millennials, TikTok is for Gen Z. Each platform in its own time took over the teenage cultural landscapes and largely shaped the way high school aged kids interacted with social media and internet content as a whole. But like I was saying earlier, both platforms have very dark corners. Starting with Tumblr, one of those dark corners definitely paved the way for a lot of young people to have EDs. Tumblr had a lot of pro ED stuff. There was a lot of communities that were dedicated to shaming one another into losing weight, keeping track of calories, posting pictures of very, very thin people and using it as inspiration. This is where the obsessions with thigh gaps came from, that being one of the main goals on that platform. And in order to achieve that goal was to give into the ED tips that a lot of these communities were giving out. There were tricks to lose weight very unhealthily, very quick. There were a lot of starvation tactics, menus where you could eat like 300 calories a day. It was very toxic and I I remember being in high school and being a part of that community, not posting anything, but I definitely knew the right hashtags, the right people to go to, and just the right things to type in so that I could get that information fast. That's how big this community was, but it definitely was hidden. It was literally like the elephant in the room where it's this really big thing, but no one was willing to acknowledge it. And I need you guys to keep in mind that this content was not I repeat, it was not healthy. It had nothing to do with people recovering from their EDs. It had nothing to do with people being open about their journeys. I think that there is a way for people to be open about their journey. And when done right, it can be very therapeutic and healing for people who are also suffering with, you know, that as well. But these blogs and posts and hashtags and all of these things, they weren't healthy. It always consisted of quotes that were very hurtful and there were two that really stuck in my mind. Unfortunately, one of them is by a model. And this quote was literally everywhere on Tumblr. And it was, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. The way that quote rewired my brain. <sighs> as an impressionable teen like it just really sucked because i believed that bullcrap even when tumblr tried to crack down on these quotes and these toxic communities users found new creative ways to go underneath that sensor and grow in different ways obviously now i have no idea what it looks like now and honestly i don't care to know mostly because now we have tiktok the modern day tumblr TikTok TikTok is not a perfect platform. I mean, any social media platform has its problems. I mean, one can even argue that Instagram is even more toxic than TikTok, which I never talk about, but it definitely can be very toxic. TikTok does a very good job at repeating Tumblr's mistakes, but prepackaging it as life hacks, as lifestyles, and anyone who grew up with the Tumblr era knows exactly what some of these creators are doing. There are so many trends that feed into severe diet culture. There's a lot of content on TikTok of creators doing what I eat in a day and it'll be like 200 calories. There are a lot of dieting TikToks, excessive exercising TikToks. So many TikToks where the creator is obviously body checking and when they are called out for said body checking they become very angry and tell the people that they're just jealous even though again anyone who has been on tumblr knows exactly how it looks like to body check they know exactly the foods to eat and it's very obvious that a lot of people who came from tumblr are slowly 
spreading that type of lifestyle onto TikTok. But again, instead of using the hashtags that you would use on Tumblr, they label it under healthy living. And a lot of people fall for it because it doesn't necessarily represent what we grew up with. It's not as blatant. It's very subtle. It's more complicated. A lot of this content definitely feeds into the narrative that healthy has a certain body type, which we all know that's not how it works. But it also promotes unrealistic expectations of what bodies should look like. There is a constant fixation on body image and weight. And again, TikTok has yet to eradicate this, but instead is repeating it. And if you do look hard enough, again, this is not me encouraging my audience, please do not look into this. But if you do look deep enough, it is possible that your For You page will have a TikTok that is like straight up explicit pro ED content. There are a lot of toxic beauty standards in general, right? Beauty standards change all the time. You guys remember how Y2K was extremely skinny and then it was kind of curvy and then BBLs. But I feel like with TikTok normalizing body checking and diet culture, I have this huge fear. And honestly, I don't even think that it's a fear. I think it is going to happen. I genuinely do believe the Y2K skinny is gonna be the next beauty standard, especially with people like Kim Kardashian taking out their BBLs and the beauty standards here in America slowly turning into Korean beauty standards or just Asian beauty standards in general. There is like this rise of people on TikTok Asian fishing and even celebrities like Ariana Grande Korean fishing, which I know I've said in a previous video, I think it's awesome that Korean culture is finally being recognized in the US. We love to see K-pop finally being celebrated. However, I feel like with the rise of TikTok and their beauty algorithm, which is a thing, Asian beauty standards are definitely contributing to people feeling very bad. Now, hold on. This is not me saying that Asian beauty standards are Bad. What I'm saying is that toxic Asian beauty standards are a part of TikTok's beauty algorithm. So this means no dark skin, no blemishes, you have to have a small face, you have to have big eyes, you have to have a small frame. It's still very toxic and unattainable even for Asians. That's why it's called toxic beauty standards. But yes, I've talked about this before in one of my videos where I talk about how TikTok convinces you that you're ugly and a big part of this is the TikTok beauty algorithm. The amount of beauty filters on TikTok that make people's skin completely white or flushed out or make them have bigger eyes and smaller noses and just basically make people look completely non-POC is absolutely crazy. And I know plenty of people have talked about this on TikTok, talking about how they don't understand why this is allowed. Why is my skin color being changed to literally white? And why is my nose being completely pinched to look even smaller than it actually is in a beauty filter. This is just one of the many subtle ways that TikTok promotes the beauty algorithm. The more you look like these filters, the higher of a chance you are going to have at becoming viral or quickly getting a fan base simply because you are deemed attractive. Of course, many of you guys are probably thinking, well, Instagram does the same exact thing. They have filters that make you look like you have plastic surgery. Yeah, and Instagram also pushes people who look very attractive. Except when it comes to TikTok, there is little evidence that they purposely push people who are considered attractive. In March 2020, there was an internal document from TikTok that instructed moderators to not promote content from viewers with ugly facial looks. The document tells moderators that videos of people with abnormal body shapes, too many wrinkles, facial scars, facial deformities, to not promote their content because they are less attractive and not worthy to be recommended to new users. Obviously, this is incredibly discriminatory towards people who have disabilities and faces that just don't fit the beauty standard, but the moderators were also told to not promote content from people who shot their content in rural fields. There is an ongoing relationship with the way women feel about themselves, their low sense of self-worth and low self-esteem, beauty norms, and social media. And TikTok definitely feeds into 
to this negativity. And pushing this type of narrative and dangerous beauty standards is not just for grown women. A study found that it took only eight minutes of scrolling to run into a TikTok about getting plastic surgery to look more attractive when a user set their profile at being 14 years old. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with plastic surgery. A lot of people are always surprised when they find out that I am not like anti-plastic surgery. I think if there's something about you that you're not comfortable with or that you don't like and it would make you happier if you were to change that, I think you should go ahead. However, the advice being thrown out on TikTok with these beauty filters and the beauty algorithm, it's convincing people that you are not worthy and you are not beautiful unless you have Eurocentric features. I know I said earlier that the beauty standards are Asian beauty standards, but I'm still not saying that it's not. Again, it is the toxic beauty standards that were colonized by Eurocentric people that convinced Asian people that they need to be white with a slim nose and big eyes in order to be seen as attractive. And this is also what the beauty algorithm pushes. <laughs> Beauty is everywhere on TikTok, and it doesn't just stop at your face. Anyone who has a body knows that bodies are something that are highly critiqued negatively in the world. If you exist and you have a body, it's most likely that people have commented on it, especially unwanted comments, whether they were ones that were giving an uncomfortable compliment to your body when you didn't want it, or an insult to your body when you didn't want it. And with women's bodies constantly being like, this ever-changing trend, whoever has the ideal body type at the time on TikTok will blow up. And I'm not body shaming and I don't want anyone to send hate to these creators, but there are certain creators that I feel like know they have the beauty standard type body, but have achieved said standard body through surgery or through filters and they don't disclose this information. And it's honestly really sh that they do that because there are a lot of impressionable young adults on TikTok. There's people from all types of ages on TikTok and every so often if one of those people run into that type of content and that content creator has not disclosed that they achieved that type of body through a filter, oh yeah, you're gonna start problems. You're definitely going to make that person viewing that TikTok feel very bad about themselves even though your body is not even your body. There are a lot of creators that definitely know exactly what to do to feed into this beauty algorithm and they know exactly what to do to get attention all while making viewers feel bad about their own bodies. It just reminds me of Tumblr literally all over again except on Tumblr people would photoshop their photos to look skinnier, to look more aesthetic, to have a smaller waist but the dangers on TikTok are astronomical because a lot of people don't know that what they're watching is photoshopped through video and the reason why this is is because not a lot of people talk about editing videos but you guys have to remember technology has definitely surpassed the normal photoshopping yourself in a celebrity selfie it has now gone into deep fakes where you can put your face on top of a celebrity's face or you can pretend to like be the president and say whatever you want you can photoshop videos to make yourself look more attractive and you just won't know that any of this is fake unless the creator discloses that it's fake. And this is where it starts treading into very dangerous territory. We're used to seeing uh, photoshopped images on Instagram, especially because for some reason celebrities can never get it figured out on how to do it correctly. <laughs> but when it comes to video, not a lot of people are, I don't want to say smart enough because it's not the case. I think it's more so there isn't enough awareness on this topic. I know there has been a couple of influencers who have called out other TikTokers for using a video Photoshop. There have been TikTokers who show their audience how easy it is to manipulate videos. But whenever there is someone who pops up on your For You page who has like this amazing body, your mind doesn't automatically go to, oh, it's Photoshop. Your mind automatically goes to you comparing your body to theirs, especially because the creator is not disclosing that their body is Photoshop photoshopped so of course your mind's gonna automatically go to you know comparing yours to theirs because obviously the misleading information is that that body is real while i was scrolling 
on bed on TikTok, I ran into a TikToker who is guilty of this. Please do not send this TikToker hate. Do not harass them, please. I am just using them as an example of someone who doesn't disclose using filters. People have called out this TikToker before. This TikToker's name is Sunny, also known as Sunny Ray XO. They have 1.8 million followers and they are known to cosplay, post thirst traps, and show off their body, which I mean, get your coins sis. But the problem that I have is that she photoshops her body in almost every single video. And it's not even subtle, but so many people believe it. There is a video that she made of her cosplaying Spider-Man. And as soon as she lays down, you can see her body completely change from her waist being normal size to the Photoshop being completely unrealistic. And the top comment is the curves. And it says liked by creator so she's clearly not wanting to admit that she's photoshopping but instead is feeding into the narrative that this is her actual body there is another video of her in a spider-man outfit and the back of her bed is clearly moving a lot and so is the walls there is the door and the reflection of the mirror is clearly bent and the top comment is bro we know you photoshop your videos but again she does not comment back on it a lot of her videos you can't really tell they're photoshopped unless you're used to seeing photoshop videos which i'm pretty used to it because i work in the social media world i just know the signs of photoshop when i see it i actually showed my fiance kevin this video it's of sunny ray dressed like annie from aot and at first you don't see anything wrong with it and he didn't really notice anything until i had to point out that the literal wall behind her is completely bent and not a lot of people noticed it. There have been plenty of people who have called her out on this toxic behavior and unfortunately she just responds with not a hint of care in her words. Creator Give Me An Egg called her out on Photoshop and on photoshopping her videos and it almost had a million likes and Sunny, the creator of the photoshopping videos, commented on her video but like why are you so upset? I'm not trying to hide anything lol i'm a cosplayer the whole point is to look like a cartoon and the tiktoker's response was very well put oh my god i didn't even realize she commented okay first of all thank you for unblocking me <laughs> that's probably why i didn't see the comment great question why i'm upset i'm so glad you were trying to learn and understand so Basically, you're editing your videos, pretending that it's real, accepting the comments, and then you have thousands of people, millions, who think that it's real, and they feel horrible about themselves, and then when people are like, you edit your videos, you reply, it's under the sauce. Like, that's so... If you don't see an issue with that, then okay, but let's continue anyway. Then you go ahead and post a video where you're like, I actually don't edit my videos. And then it's so obvious that you edited your face in that one. We see your chin move, you took it down, but we saw your chin move, we saw your cheeks move. Like, it was very obvious that you edited that. You were victimizing yourself. You were saying, I didn't know it was a secret, but like, people aren't stupid. Like, we know what's going on. So that's the issue. You can, I said this in another video, you can edit yourself like as much as you want but don't trick people into thinking that's you because it's not you. The truth is that this TikTok creator is not disclosing that it's fake. She deletes comments of anyone who accuses her of photoshopping her videos. She fights with people whenever they bring up the fact that she photoshops her videos. This creator is also known to block people who call her out too. I actually don't think photoshopping your videos for cosplay is something bad, but again, it's that disclosing every single time you post that is very important. Because the comments underneath that person's video that called her out were people who were shocked that it was photoshopped. Again, going back to the experiment where it only took eight minutes for a 14 year old to be pushed into the plastic surgery algorithm. I can only imagine how many more minutes it would take that 14 year old user to be exposed to a video like this and end up having extreme body issues because they don't know that this person's video is photoshopped. And one of the biggest problems that I keep 
running into or I, I keep saying is keep seeing like this this is a main argument people are saying like you're dumb if you can't tell it's fake mm. but the thing is like with social media now there's so many filters and so many things that you can do to manipulate your videos and the amount of plastic surgery people are getting the whole bbl trend and everything it's really hard to distinguish what is not real and what is real on social media it's now become like this huge mind game for young people and even though i work in this field and i can tell whether something is photoshopped or not i'm not gonna lie like it still bamboozles me sometimes you know what i mean i catch myself comparing myself to a lot of people online and feeling bad about myself and it becomes this huge cycle of low self-esteem and self-sabotage until i have to do even further research and i realize that this person that i'm comparing myself to is literally a real life sim i feel like a lot of people have forgotten how natural bodies look like on social media people have bellies people have stretch marks and i'm just so tired of being bombarded with people's fake bodies one thing that a lot of people have been saying is that well some people truly do look like that they truly do look like the beauty standard which yeah of course i know that in fact sunny ray has an old tiktok account where she didn't photoshop any of her videos and this is how she looks she is absolutely gorgeous she didn't need to change how she looked at all but it's just such a shame that we live in a society where people who already look the beauty standard still feel like they're not enough okay so quick side note i currently have my humidifier on next to me and a heater and i am chewing on an anti-cough drop so um please bear with me with all this noise but it's about two days after i filmed this video and i still feel absolutely horrid but i do have a couple of updates on the sunny ray situation within two days it became a pretty big deal and Sunny actually ended up deleting a lot of the videos that people were using to talk about the Photoshop and instead of posting on her main account how she actually looks unedited, she posted how she looks unedited on her um, alternate account. Um, some videos are still up and then after deleting some videos she reposted them so I honestly have no idea what's going on with her account but all I know is now that she's been called out for photoshopping her videos and she's finally acknowledging it that's good definitely that's good however there are tiktokers and influencers and youtubers like so many people out there who post pictures on freaking Pinterest. Anywhere you can think of that has an image, it's most likely been altered. Those people do not get called out. Those people do not get caught. Just because one person, like Sunny, has been called out doesn't mean the rest will stop. The internet is incredibly dangerous and I can only imagine how far the creator would have taken the photoshopping if she was never called out for it. And honestly, that's what scares me the most. And what scares me the most are the people who haven't gotten caught. There are a lot of things you need to look out for when scrolling on any app. Thankfully, there are creators who are calling this behavior out though and there are creators that you can follow that do show off their real bodies that most likely will look closer to yours than the unattainable beauty standards that content creators themselves can even reach just always make sure that you don't give in to this toxic narrative and always think twice before comparing your body to someone on social media because chances are they themselves don't even look like that all right everyone today's video was pretty short i am feeling <coughs> like crap <laughs> i'm very tired i really had it in my head and heart to make this video but if you guys made it to the end of this video comment down below a duck emoji to let me know that you watched the entire thing remember to like and subscribe and comment down below what you think about creators photoshopping their videos or have you guys seen things that are worse than um people photoshopping their videos let me know remember to follow me on my instagram remember to follow me on my soundcloud and check out my music because i make music but of course before i end this video guys i just want to say take care of yourselves take care of your mental health and if you're sick just like me out there I <coughs> i'm praying for a speedy recovery for you y'all just please pray for me because the amount of times that i've seen the lord too much so yeah i hope you guys have a nice day whatever you do today just make it count all right everyone i will see you in the next video so bye